Did you know that there's several cases around the world where identical twins commit a crime, including murder, and DNA tests cannot tell which one did it? Or were they both present? Today, we're diving into identical twin criminal or criminals who are accused of murder, rape, and etc. But most weren't convicted because they couldn't prove which one was the real suspect. So if you were an identical twin and one was a bad twin, blamed it on you for being the actual criminal, would you cover for your sibling? This is one of the most craziest topics that I've ever researched and I did not know for some reason identical twins have the same exact DNA that you can't tell, especially when it comes to criminals. And I first heard about this story on Diva Jessica, which is one of my favorite Korean true crime channel. I just wanna say I really love my outfit today, you guys. Like I'm feeling like a preppy little schoolgirl. I always have a link of what I'm wearing in the description box with every single one of my videos. Just hitting the like button, subscribing. Sharing these mysterious videos helps me to continue going and let me know in the comments if you are an identical twin or a fraternal twin or a triplet or if you know someone who are twins i want to know your opinion on today's case in 2011 in the united kingdom a 17 year old girl will name her casey for today's video casey was introduced to a man named kareem she met kareem through another friend and they reportedly met once in person i believe it was just a very short introduction it's not like she knew him that well and and a couple months later on her Blackberry Messenger, she would get a friend request or a message from Kareem. It seems like they were exchanging texts back and forth. And Casey also admits that yes, there were some sexy talk and flirting going around between her and Kareem. On November 5th, 2011, Kareem would call Casey and both of them decided to meet up that evening and she agreed. Kareem was a 20 year old male and because she knew that Kareem's friends would be joining along, he claimed that there's gonna be three people. She knew it was gonna be awkward, so she decided to bring along another girlfriend. The two girls met up with Kareem inside of his car, and actually, there were five men inside, so more than she anticipated, and they decided to go to the park. As soon as they got to the park, Casey remembers that the guys were being overtly sexual with her and her friend. Now, it is noted that Casey did anticipate like flirtiness with her and Kareem, like holding hands, kissing, you know, who knows but she did not anticipate all of the boys to be touchy with her and her friends. Now at the park, all of a sudden, the men's demeanor changed. She was pulled by three men, taken to a secluded location in the park, told her to get on the ground, they pushed her allegedly, and claimed that they made her give oral adult actions. I believe it was just two men that made her do oral stuff and the rest of the friends started to watch and they were watching like it was a fun game and you could obviously tell that this was something that they planned to do to these girls and i believe her friend was also sa assaulted in another part of the park right after kareem would take her phone and drove off with his friends. Kareem and her friend went to the police right away and they were able to find bodily fluids from the men inside of her mouth and jackets. Now, thank God she went to the police right away because if she didn't, the DNA would be gone and they wouldn't be able to find who did this. After doing the DNA test, they found out that Kareem actually was a fake name. They did find the man that they were looking for and found an address that matched. When police went to arrest the man who they believed was the culprit, they were shocked to find that it wasn't just one man, it was two men, both 20 years old, identical twins who lived in the same house. They were revealed to be Aftab Asgar and Mohammed Asgar. Now, fun fact, identical twins happen when a single egg is fertilized, then the egg divides into two embryos, making them share the exact same genes as the other. Another fun fact, they're always the same sex and blood type is also the same. So 99.99% .99 of their DNA is exact. For some reason, that should be obvious, but like it was still interesting to find out. Like they're two different people, so like maybe there's different DNA. Now, the only thing that differentiates between identical twins is actually their fingerprints. So fingerprints is different even if you're twins. Fraternal twins, however, 
do have different DNAs. Now we can't even tell by DNA now who did this. Was it Aftab or was it Muhammad? And now Casey claims it was only one of the guys between the twins that had done this to her. The second guy was a total different friend. So police decided to investigate their phones and see which one was texting Casey. I mean, that should be pretty standard to figure out. And Muhammad's phone is where they found most of the texting. And he admitted that yes, he was talking to Casey, but never assaulted her. He then tried to provide an alibi, which was his own brother. Aftab on the other girl also said, no, I never assaulted the girl either, and claimed that he was somewhere else and tried to provide another alibi. And even more complicated, it seems like the brothers also interchanged their phones. Like sometimes one brother would use the other brother's phone to call people. They lived together, they were close, and it was actually a lot more complicated than you would think. Again, both twins denied their involvement. They claimed that they were innocent and it was unfair that they would be charged. So police decided to charge both of them to try and get a confession. Casey herself also could not identify which twin did it because they looked literally the same. They were both out on bail and that was the prosecutor and investigator's burden to find who did this. You do need strong, undoubtable evidence to prosecute someone. The investigation took about two years. And this is the closest to what investigators believe happened. And it was said to believe that the person who was driving the car that day was also Muhammad. And because Muhammad had the messages on his phone, they believe that he was the actual culprit who SA the girls. They also think that Muhammad used his brother's phone, Aftab's phone, interchangeably to call Casey at times, making it again harder to solve this case. Originally, they were both charged for R and SA charges, but the prosecutors did drop the charges against Aftab and only Muhammad was charged later on. The defense tried to argue that this whole thing was consensual. Like Casey agreed to do this to the guy and Casey absolutely knew that, you know, Kareem and her or aka Aftab and her did have, you know, this flirty thing going on. But the victim side, of course, argued that no, this was not consensual. And if it was, why did Aftab need to steal her phone and even make up a fake name to do all of this? Now, I cannot find any updates to what happened and if Aftab was eventually charged, but I'm assuming even though he was charged, it was incredibly difficult to try and prosecute. A similar case also happened in France, where a serial rapist was terrorizing the town from 2012 to 2013. Multiple women from age 20 to 70s coming forward saying that they were R grapes and had their items stolen as well. Investigators were able to collect the DNA from some of the women, which turned out to be the same man's DNA in all of the five cases. Again, police were so sure that they had this guy, they had a match, they went to his address and they knocked on the door and said, we got you. And surprise, guess what? Again, it wasn't one man. It was two men who were 26 years old, who were living in the same place, shared the same car, clothes, phones at times, and even had a joint Facebook account. It turned out to be twins named Johan and Elvin Gomez. I'm sorry about sharing a Facebook account at age 26. I don't know. <laughs> That's just a little weird, but I mean, it did happen in 2012, 10 years ago, so. But it was reported that they were so close with each other that they literally shared social media accounts and God knows what else they shared. So when they were both interrogated, they both firmly, absolutely denied that they were the suspects and basically pointed the finger at each other. But one twin did have a more solid alibi. So the French police decided to go really savage and lock both of them up. They really did hope for a confession by locking your other brother up. I'm sure one of them will be like, I feel bad. like. I have to confess, like, I'm locking my brother up for something that I did, but no confession. And they don't believe both of the men did it, they believe it was just one of the twin. Now there was one peculiar thing that the victims did notice about the suspect, which was that he had a stutter. It was a unique way that he talked and that's the only thing that the victims can identify. Police found out actually one of the brother was partially deaf and that twin was Yoan. Because of his disability, he had a stutter. 10 months into their detention, 
Yohan decided to confess that he was the culprit and he admitted to everything, saying that he was scared at first and that he just didn't want to admit it. So after the confession, the charges against Elvin was dropped and supposedly, even after that, Elvin never mentioned that he blamed his brother or that he hated his brother. I mean, it just meant that they were that close and understanding of each other. So without the stutter or that particular thing that the victims were able to give to the police, we would never know which one would be the suspect and who knows? they could have been free. But many other identical twin suspect cases are not as lucky as the two that we talked about because they were actually charged. On January 2009 in Germany, three masked men robbed a luxury jewelry store and they literally used like ropes to come down from the ceiling like, like a spy movie, you guys, like a Hollywood spy movie. These men were wearing gloves, ski mask, backpack, and somehow knew where the motion sensors were in the jewelry store. So they were very knowledge in literally getting this mission done. No security guards were alerted. Again, no alarm went off. These were professionals that ended up stealing about $5 million worth of goods. Looking at the CCTV footage was useless because again, they were masked, they had gloves, so there were no fingerprints. They did make one mistake though, which was one of the gloves from one of the men actually fell off and I guess they didn't realize it. They tested some sweat glands that was inside of the glove and found a match. Again, police were sure that this was the suspect, went to their house and was surprised to find not one man, but two. They were a set of identical twins, 27-year-old Hassan and Abbas. They were both charged and they both denied and they did not confess. Time went by and prosecutors could not point out which one did this or both of them did this. They couldn't prove either one. And they also could not find the jewelry. It's not like one of them came forward saying that, you know, this is where the jewelry was. So there was just not enough evidence to prosecute and put them behind bars. Hassan and Abbas ended up walking free. And this case is still unsolved today. Police say until new evidence is found, they will not stop looking, but, but can you guys believe it? Finding a DNA match for the suspect and you can't even charge one of them because you just don't know which one did it. So both of them gets to walk free. Out of the three men, two of them could have been twins or one of them. You just never know. Another story happened in the USA. In 2011, a 19 year old man was killed outside of a nightclub in Arizona. Witnesses claimed that there were indeed identical twins inside of the club and they did see them and they looked exactly the same, but the only thing that was different was their clothes. They were wearing different outfits. One of them ended up being a shooter that killed this 19 year old. Now, because they were identical twins and looked the same, they had to go by the witnesses, but the witnesses were also confused as well. Some of them were blaming Orlando Nambard and other witnesses were blaming Brandon Nambard. And it was just becoming unreliable even by the witnesses. Unfortunately, the weapon, the gun was never found. So they couldn't even get the fingerprints to decide which one did it. Police believe it was Orlando who was the real suspect and decided to only charge him. Again, both of them were denying that they were the suspects and even Orlando who was sitting in jail for four months, he kept denying and pleading his innocence, saying that it's unfair that he's sitting in jail for something he didn't do. And eventually, because there was not enough evidence, Orlando was released until this day. Who exactly killed this 19 year old is an unsolved mystery. So now you have a murderer on the loose, can't even convict one person because you don't know which one did it. In 2009 in Malaysia, identical twins Sathis and Sabrish was arrested after police found large amounts of marijuana and opium in the car. One of them was driving this car. So the police decided to go to this man's house and they found out that there were twins, identical twins living there. They both were sharing the same car, same house or apartment. And apparently in Malaysia, there's a death sentence if you're found with drugs, which is crazy. And because investigators could not pinpoint and find which one was a real owner, both of them were acquitted and escaped the mandatory death sentence. So technically one brother saved the other's donkey. In 1999 in Michigan, a female was brutally R slash S aid. And five years later, police was able to find the suspect through the matching DNA. Police found a match for Jerome Cooper, but he claimed that he was an identical 
twin, his twin brother Tyrone Cooper. And they both strongly denied that they were the suspects and are this woman. Now you would think surprisingly, again, because you're family members and you're close to your siblings, like you would confess so that your brother doesn't go to jail. But none of them has done this. None of them confessed. So again, in this case, because none of them confessed, it was up to the investigators to pinpoint and try to find which one was responsible. Now in this case, both of them were put in the same room and monitored so that one of them would confess and the police would find which one was a culprit. But Jerome and Tyrone, when they were put in the room, they just had some nice small talk. But none of them would be pointing blame or being angry. You know, they wanted to save their brother and they knew that if they don't have evidence, they would walk free, which is what happened. Police could not find which one was a suspect and Tyrone and Jerome both walked free. And the victim says that she's still waiting for the day where the suspect will face justice. Which is very unfortunate in cases like this because you have a murderer, you have a grape person. You know one of them did it, but you can't pinpoint exactly which twin it was, but still, both of them walking free knowing that one of them done this to you? What is the odd chances that this would happen? I mean, if this was like medieval times, they would probably lock both of them up for life, saying that you're both gonna be punished. Another interesting case, in 2007, a woman slept with identical twins, Richard and Raymond Miller. She had fun with them near the same timeline and actually gave birth to a child, and she didn't know which one was a father. So the paternity test showed that the both both twins were 99.9% .9 the father. The only way to really find out the father in this case, which was not 100% accurate or reliable, was that she just needed to go back and find out, you know, when she had a period and when she slept with the guys exactly. You know, had to measure your cycle from like a year ago. And they determined or legally ruled that it's more likely that Raymond was the father, but who actually knows? Now there are researchers saying that if you have a twin, you can tell with like high DNA technology which one the father would be because there are like tiny differences, but it might be too small of a difference for you to notice. There's also new research saying that later in life, DNA in twins, identical twins could also change you know, depending on your environment and things like that. But it's so little of a change that test, at least right now, cannot tell. So what do you guys think when it comes to identical twins? And if you cannot find one culprit, you have to let both of them go, at least in our modern society and our modern law system. And what other ways do you think there are in cases like this to finding out which twin is the bad twin. Again, the only way you would be able to tell is through fingerprints and apparently those are hard to find. And I would love to know if you are a set of identical twins, if this happened in your life, right? So if your twin was a bad twin and murdered someone or done something and police come to arrest you, obviously you're gonna be like, wait, I didn't do it. And let's say your brother or sister was also locked up. Like how would you try to prove that you didn't do it? Or in like most of these cases, would you also try to kind of cover for your brother? And your brother or sister's pointing the blame at you. Like, would you be mad at your sibling? Would you still like try to help them get out of this because you're technically your family? So let me know in the comments down below. Remember to hit the like button, sharing, subscribing as soon as you hit that notification bell and the video is uploaded. You will get a reply from me. See you guys in my next video.